In today's show, soaring inflation data could trigger the next Bitcoin collapse, says analyst Benjamin Cohen and shares his target. That's right. Cohen warns that instead of breaking out, surging CPI, the CPI index scheduled for next week and more hawkishness from the Fed could trigger another leg down for BTC. And his target is $14,000 in such a scenario. And we close the month of October at 20498 So welcome to Moonvember. And check this out. Breaking news. China and Russia may be working towards a new gold-backed currency, aiming to dethrone the dollar as the primary well-reserved currency. And China earlier in the year started to buy up huge quantities of gold as Russia was forced off the dollar due to sanctions and Max Kaiser's response been predicting this for five years. This is a US dollar killer and my primary driver to my short term target of Bitcoin 220,000. If Russia and China and others have trouble sourcing gold, they'll look at asset backed digital versions. Duh. Eventually all roads lead to BTC. Also in today's show, $500 billion asset manager Apollo launches new crypto custody service for institutional investors, as well as Twitter monetization and free speech drove Binance's $500 million injection into Twitter. I'll be sharing the latest from ZZ, as well as Shark Tank superstar Kevin O'Leary says crypto holders will witness something remarkable in January of 2023. That's right. Mr. Wonderful's predicting an upcoming meeting of the world leaders, which put crypto in the limelight once again. Also in today's show, why in the world is Dogecoin skyrocketing to the moon right now? What in the world is happening? I'll be breaking this down for you, why it's happening as well as crypto analysts says Bitcoin can triple in price to $63,000. Send it before the next halving. I'll be breaking all this down for you and we'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this plus so much more in today's show. I want to welcome everyone just tuning in to today's episode of Crypto News Alerts. I'm your host, JV, and this is podcast episode number 1091 of the Crypto News Alerts pod. Today's show is brought to you by iTrust Capital, the number one crypto IRA platform in the world. Do you know you can buy and sell and trade 25 plus cryptos as well as precious metals, gold and silver? That's right. And if you sign up today, you can start your account with only $1,000. And for doing so, you're going to receive $100 dollar reward for funding your account when you use my referral link in the description right down below. So go ahead and do so right now and let's get this crypto tax free, shall we? And with that being shared, we have a lot to cover. As you can see, the Bitcoin price action currently hovering just above 20,400 at the time of this live stream. And let's dive right into today's market watch. You can see Ethereum barely in the green as well, maintaining just under $1,600 while Dogecoin is the big gainer for the day. Go figure up another 7% trading at roughly 14 cents. We have XRP and Tron barely in the green, while Binance Coin, Solana, Polkadot, Avalanche, and Cardano are all pulling back and in the red. And checking out coinmarketcap.com. You can see the crypto market cap sitting just above that trillion dollar milestone with about 80 billion in volume. In the past 24 hours, the current Bitcoin dominance back on the decline at 38.7% with the Ether dominance at 19% even. And checking out the top 100 cryptocurrency gainers for the past 24 hours, we have Chain leading the pack up 13%, trading at 6.6 .6 cents, followed by Dogecoin up almost 9%, trading just under 14 cents and up a whopping 127% for the week, followed by Synthetix and Uniswap. And checking out the top 100 cryptocurrency gainers for the week, as you can see, Dogecoin clearly leading the pack, followed by, we got Clay, Sheeb, Osmo, Minya, and as you can see, most of the major altcoins are in the green and pumping for the past week, which is a good indicator. And checking out one of my favorite indicators, which is the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. Shows we are currently rated a 30 in fear. Yesterday was a 31. Last week, a 20 in extreme fear. And last month, a 24 in extreme fear. And if you're not familiar with the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, extreme fear can be a sign. Investors are too worried. That could be a great buying opportunity like we've had for the bulk of 2022. BTFD, buy that freaking dip. And when investors are getting too greedy, that means the market is due for a correction. And with that being shared, welcome everyone just tuning into today's episode of Crypto News Alerts. I'm your host, JV, and naturally we have a lot to cover and no time to waste. So let's dive right into our Bitcoin technical analysis for the day. While he followed crypto analyst Benjamin Cohen says incoming inflation data could largely influence the trajectory of the King Crypto. In a new video, the analyst tells his 771,000 subs that interest for Bitcoin will likely come back if 
the price of the top crypto asset, breaches the bull market support ban. The bull market support ban is a combo of the 21 week exponential moving average and the 20 week simple moving average, quoting the analysts here. I wanna draw your attention to the logarithmic regression channel. We are near the bottom of it. If it was fit for a long time, we are coming up for a bull market support ban. And if we break above it, there will likely be a lot of people FOMOing back into the market. That's right. Cohen warns that instead of breaking out, surging CPI index data scheduled for next week and more hawkishness from the Fed could trigger another leg down for Bitcoin. And he targets the $14,000 level in such a scenario. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the analyst as he shares here. If we get rejected, buy it. If Powell comes out and is super hawkish or something, which could happen, core CPI is at new highs. It is higher today than it was for the entire year. So if core CPI comes out and it continues to come in, hot and the Fed continues to provide us with oversized interest rate hikes, then you can see a lower low sooner rather than later. And then we try to work our way out of it into the next bull cycle. So there you have it. Let me know if you feel we're likely to see that $14,000 of bottom for the King Crypto. And if another leg down is in the cards for Bitcoin, Cohen still says the Bitcoin trading anywhere near the 20 range, 20,000 is a good value for the long-term bulls. As he shares here, as I said, long-term value, I think is around $20,000. I think it is going to provide a lot of long-term value for Bitcoin. It is going to give you the best price I'm sorry, is it going to give you the best price in the short term? It's hard to say. Short term moves are very difficult to predict, at least for me they are, but I do think around these prices over the macro scale, it is still going to be relative relatively an attractive price. And to watch this video he did entitled Bitcoin Logarithmic Regression, check the show notes below the video in the description. And regarding his bottom target of 14,000, do you feel that is likely? Or do you feel that the bottom is already in for this uh, bear market, which is currently sitting at around 17,500? Let me know your honest thoughts in the comments right down below. And now let's share some very uh, interesting things. As you see, October closed at 20,498, and we are now officially in. Moonvember, do you think it will be a Moonvember or not? Holla at your boy and let me know uh, below. And as I shared in the intro, this is pretty big news. China and Russia may be working towards a new backed currency aiming to dethrone the dollar as the primary world reserve currency because this is going to be backed by gold. Now, China earlier this year started to buy up huge quantities of gold as Russia was forced off to the dollar due to sanctions. And I love Max's response to this. As he says, I've been predicting this for five years. This is a US dollar killer, all fiat and primary driver to my short term target Bitcoin, $220,000 send it. If Russia and China and others have trouble sourcing gold, they'll look at asset-backed digital versions. Duh. Eventually, all roads lead to BTC. you damn straight. And quoting uh, President Nigel Bokele, a very powerful quote he shared in this interview, the Federal Reserve is nothing federal and has no reserves. They rob you from your wealth and from your savings, and that's immoral. It is not only immoral, but it also destroys some basic economic principles like saving. He ain't telling no lies. So there you have it. I want to Welcome everyone just tuning in to today's episode of Crypto News Alerts. Naturally, we have lots to cover uh, for the day. And as you can see, we're trading at roughly 20,500. I'd love to see Bitcoin break 21,000 so we can climb on up maybe to 23,000 plus. If we can break 25, there is no doubt we can potentially head back up to 30,000 and start uh, heading towards this next cycle, which occurs in 2024, kicking it off right for 2023. However, we may still be sideways for quite some time as we do have a split amongst analysts uh, believing that the bottom is already in versus we have lower to go. That's why I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments uh, right down below. And with that being shared, now let's break down our next story of the day and talk about this $500 billion asset uh, manager who's going to launch new crypto services. $500 billion asset management giant Apollo Global Management is launching new crypto custody service for its clients through a partnership with digital asset platform Anchorage Digital. According to the press release, Apollo is partnering with Anchorage to become one of the largest private investment firms to offer crypto custody services. Let's go. Anchorage, founded in 2017, valued over $3 billion, says it expects to custody a significant portion of Apollo's digital asset portfolio. Quoting their co-founder here, Apollo is a leader in the alternatives industry, so their use of Anchorage's custody platform is incredibly validating, and we expect this collaboration can be 
can set the bar for how institutions work with regulated digital asset banks like Anchorage to provide custody and other services for their crypto holdings, being both nimble and secure with digital asset portfolios doesn't have to be mutually exclusive. And we are confident this partnership will prove that very powerful words. And Adam Ealing, Chief Operating Officer of Apollo's Digital Assets team, added the following, we are drawn to working with Anchorage given their commitment to operating under strict regulatory oversight, their strong emphasis on security and segregation of client assets, and their ease of use for asset managers to hold digital tokens as we explore creative ways to apply blockchain technology across Apollo's businesses. We look forward to collaborating with Anchorage for the safekeeping of client assets. And earlier this month, we had BNY Mellon, who became the first major U.S. bank to safeguard crypto assets alongside traditional investments on their platform. The bank since received permission from New York financial regulators earlier this year to store Bitcoin and Ethereum for customers on their platform, subsequently launching a custody service afterwards. So there you have it. Let the mass adoption continue as Bitcoin game theory is in full effect. I think many more asset managers are going to be releasing and launching uh, crypto custody services. I mean, why wouldn't they? Especially considering there's literally trillions of dollars just sitting on the sidelines waiting to be invested into crypto, but many are waiting for those regulations, which leads us to one of our upcoming stories I'm going to be breaking down in detail. But first, let's discuss crypto, Twitter, and Web3, as this is ultimately uh, trending uh, right now across uh, the Twitter sphere. Binance CEO CZ explained the reasoning behind its half a billion dollar co-investment into Elon's Twitter, citing monetization potential, crypto community free speech, and the opportunity to eventually help bring Twitter into Web3. Let's go. CZ's comments came from an October 31st CNBC Squawk Box segment where he explained what drove his co-investment with Elon to acquire the social media platform, noting the following. I believe Twitter has been monetized well. I'm sorry, let me rephrase. I believe Twitter has not been monetized well. It has not grown well. There are many tactical problems like bots that spam my comments. There are scammer accounts on there and it does not been run well, but I think the platform has huge value in it itself. And especially now with Elon at the helm, we are very confident, he added. Now, Binance has not wavered in its support for Musk's acquisition of Twitter since it first announced its support back in May of 2022. Other co-investors include Sequoia Capital, Fidelity Management, and Research Company. The Binance CEO said Twitter's difficult price valuation didn't impact its investment decision as they considered the long-term prospects to be strong while giving crypto a seat at the table when it comes to free speech, quoting CZ here, we are long-term investors. We believe in strong entrepreneurs. We believe in strong platforms. We believe in free speech. We look at this from a 10, 20, 50, 100-year basis. So a little price fluctuation on a monthly basis doesn't bother us. However, decisions as to what Twitter accounts are reactivated won't lie in the hands of Musk, who said that the new Content Moderation Council will bear the duty to determine what banned user accounts are restored. However, the billionaire entrepreneur confirmed in a tweet that the council will exercise its discretion while widely diverse viewpoints. CZ says it invested and also hopes to play a part in Twitter's eventual transition into Web3, such as adding crypto-based payments onto the social media platform. As he shares here, we want to help solve those immediate problems like charging for memberships that can be done very easily by using cryptocurrencies as a means of payment. Very powerful words. Which cryptocurrencies do you likely will be integrated into the Twitter platform as a means of payments. Obviously, we have Dogecoin, uh, Elon's uh, uh, crypto of choice. We got Bitcoin, we got Ethereum, and so many others out there. And according to Reuters' report on October 28th, the crypto exchange plans to create a dedicated team to work on potential crypto and blockchain-based solutions for Twitter. I think it's a good sign overall that CZ is a part of uh, Twitter in this acquisition. The new team will explore how to build on-chain solutions to address issues such as spam bot accounts. Now, Binance's $500 million investment into Twitter makes them the fourth largest shareholder in the social media platform amongst 19 investors. And Twitter is also no longer a publicly traded company, keep that in mind, having been delisted from the New York Stock Exchange on the 28th, uh, following Musk's decision to take the company private. So there you have it. What are your thoughts surrounding Elon taking the company private? He also said that eventually he would make it public uh, once again. I ultimately think it's a good thing for free speech. I think it is a good thing for Web3 and a good thing for crypto. And I thank God that uh, 
Elon did not partner with uh, SBF, who has been trying to do some very nasty things and stir up, stirring up a lot of controversy in this Twitter space, taking over a lot of companies as of late. I could only imagine being he is working so close with the regulators. It would frighten me if Sam Bankman-Fried had ownership of Twitter, but thank God he partnered with CZ, who owns a small stake in the platform. And I think overall, this is for the better, but I'd love to know your honest thoughts in the comments right down below. With that being shared, now let's jump into the latest of what's going on with Kevin O'Leary, AKA Mr. Wonderful, the Shark Tank uh, superstar himself. He says he is predicting an upcoming meeting of world leaders, which will put crypto in the limelight. In a new interview, the Shark Tank investor says digital assets will be one of the top issues that will be tackled during the World Economic Forum annual meeting that will take place in Davos, Switzerland in January of next year, which is right around the corner, right? Quitting him here. This year, you're going to see crypto at the top of the list of what is being discussed by global bankers. I agree 100%. Specifically around payment systems, where we talk about AC transfer between banks or SWIFT transfer internationally. These were private sector innovations decades ago that were heavily regulated by global governments. And for the first time now, products like stablecoins can really disrupt that as a significantly faster, more productive, more transparent, more auditable, but above all, far less expensive system for transferring global assets. He says that stablecoins will be an important part of the crypto-related discussions, including the Stablecoin Transparency Act, which aims to improve the transparency of stablecoin issuers like Circle and Tether, quitting him here. So you're going to see companies like Circle headline at that event. You're going to see a lot of crypto-based conversation at a global level with global governments as they struggle to find some kind of policy and regulation in that bill. The Stablecoin Transparency Act is at the forefront of that. This is a bipartisan U.S. bill that I think could be marked up by the time we get to that place because it'll be after the midterms on November 8th, which is what? Another week away, which is going to be significantly for crypto policy or significant. I think that will happen in the House and it will help the crypto policy. But I think all of this is going to be really fascinating and why everybody should stay on their toes. Lots of change incoming. So there you have it. And to watch this video that Mr. Wonderful did entitled The Coming Depression and Crash with Kevin O'Leary, check the show notes below the video in the description and let me know if you agree or disagree. I mean, as we all know, it is a fact. The world's elite runs this world and they do meet up every once in a while and they are meeting up soon. So I would not be surprised if crypto is at the top of their list as well. Just stating the obvious. With that being shared, now let's break down Dogecoin and why in the world it is skyrocketing right now. And I have a question for you. How many of you are currently short-term bullish on Doge? Let me know in the comments right down below. With that being shared, let's break break it down. Why is Dogecoin pumping? Following Elon's Twitter acquisition confirmation last week, the price of Doge went through the roof. For the first time since May of this year, Doge surpassed one cent, making it temporarily exceeding even 14 cents on Monday. Doge took a small breather, but it did not last that long. That's right. Numerous members of the Dogecoin community predicted a tweet from Musk would be enough to start another Doge rally. And Musk did not disappoint the Dogecoin community. As he shared here on Halloween, you can see this dog, which I guess is the Doge mascot with a Twitter shirt, with a pumpkin carved with a Twitter logo, which sent Shiba absolutely uh, rocketing once again, as shared here. Uh, yeah, it's wild. Even though Musk only added a winking smiley as the text. That's right. His only text is an emoji of a wink. <laughs> uh, it was clear to the community that Doge will soon be integrated as a payment method on Twitter. And it was precisely this rumor which drove the skyrocketing price gains of the past few days. Musk's gigantic influence on the Doge price is nothing new for the crypto market. In recent years, Musk's tweets have caused the price to literally explode time and time again. So what do you expect to be different this time? The chances that the richest man on the earth will really integrate doge on twitter seems fairly high after the tweet back in april musk already expressed the idea of letting twitter users pay with the meme coin for this premium subscription service twitter blue and in addition rumors have been circulating in recent days that musk plans to make all users pay 20 dollars for a blue check mark doge could also be used for this purpose now that musk is making good on his promises to the doge community is also evident in the fact that some tesla products can already be paid for with dogecoin on the auto 
Boilermaker's website. In addition, the Boring Company accepts the crypto as a means of payment for the use of the Los Vegas Loop. And because of the massive influence on the market, some people may already call it manipulation. Not everyone believes that Musk has altruistic intentions. In June, the $258 billion lawsuit was filed against Musk, SpaceX, and Tesla for manipulating the Doge price. And in September, the lawsuit was expanded to include seven new investors and six new defendants, including his tunneling company, Boring Co. Now, Musk and other defendants are accused of manipulating the Dogecoin price over the past two years. And after a gigantic rise of over 36,000%, I repeat, after a gigantic rise of over 36,000%, the billionaire allegedly realized his profits and subsequently caused a crash. In this way, Musk and company earned tens of billions of dollars at the expense of other investors, according to the complaint. Now, let me know if you agree or disagree that likely that Elon could be involved with insider uh, trading with Dogecoin. Do you think he is one of the largest Dogecoin hodlers of the world? Or do you think he is not and it maybe has a small position? I don't know if he's ever publicly stated how much Dogecoin he specifically holds. And we don't know how much Dogecoin his family specifically holds. So that is the mystery. But nonetheless, now that Elon is officially the, the CEO and owner of one of the largest social media platforms in the world, and there are plans of integrating uh, Dogecoin payments into uh, crypto uh, Twitter, what are your thoughts? Do you think that Dogecoin can potentially hit a dollar as many moon predictions have been sharing? Let me know your honest thoughts in the comments right down below. With that being shared, now let's break down our final story of the day, the moment you have all been waiting for before we kick off some live Q&A and where you can ask me literally anything. As $63,000 means approximately triple the current uh, Bitcoin price. So let's break this down. Popular crypto analyst and host of the Invest Answers YouTube channel, shout out to Invest Answers, one of my favorite YouTube channels, says Bitcoin can easily go on a 3X rally before the next having event. Let's freaking go. In a new strategy session, the analyst tells his 444,000 YouTube subs that strong Bitcoin rallies usually precede Bitcoin's halvings, an event where miners' block rewards are cut in half and therefore crunching the future supply. According to the analyst, historical precedence based on the halving dates places Bitcoin at around $63,000 level by March of 2024, which is what? About four months months away, which would be more than a 200% gain from the current prices, quoting the analyst here. Historically, Bitcoin begins to rally 15 months before the next halving. The next halving is expected April or May 2024. Lots of rumors are flying around it could happen in December of 2023, depending upon the actual timing of the blocks and if it gets to go less than 10 minutes. I'm sticking with the April time frame of 2024. November 2022 is 15 months away from that halving date. Bitcoin tends to finish 30 39% from where it traded 24 months prior to the halving. And that would imply March 2022 at 45,500 times one plus 39%. That should take us to $63,160 by March 2024. And remember that this is not the end of it. After the halving is when the real action happens. Agreed. But before, there is a run. So just think about that. 15 months from now is a little more than a year and a quarter. Not a long time. Bitcoin can triple and then do a lot more after after that, and he shares this stock to flow chart. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the analyst that we can potentially see a $63,000 Bitcoin price before the next halving. I also want to discuss real quick some predictions. Stock to flow predicts a $100,000 Bitcoin price sometime between 2024 and 2025. We have credible crypto, an analyst predicting a $100,000 to $150,000 Bitcoin price in 2023 before the halving. We have Samson Mao still predicting a $100,000 Bitcoin price before the end of the year. We have Max Kaiser still predicting a $220,000 Bitcoin price price before the end of the year, but I'd love to know your predictions, so let me know in the comments.